Okay, today we're going to be talking about product detection. So this is the MX1, and it uses an, an external photo cell. Uh, this is a diffuse style product detector. There are a couple of different other ones, uh, fiber optic, laser, a number of different types, but this is the standard photo cell that comes along with the MX1. Now I've got a couple of different products here which are very common for us to see. Uh, one is your box, uh, the other is your jar. Uh, of course the jar will come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, but these are just four examples. Um, now what we want to take a look at here with our photo detector is uh, we've got it mounted nice and close to the print head here. Um, you'll notice here on the back of the barrel is a little light. Uh, whenever something comes in front of the photo sensor, that comes on. So it'll let you know that it's receiving a signal. Anytime that comes on, we want it to come on and stay on nice and steady. Uh, we don't want any flickering or anything like that. That means it's going to be sending multiple signals to the printer, and we definitely don't want that. So... First thing we'll take a look at is using the box, uh, because anything like this is going to be uh, fairly simple. Um, as you can see, as we come across here, uh, it gets a good read on the box, uh, very, very stable all the way through, and that's what we're looking for. We want to make sure that it sees it and that light stays on the entire time the box passes, and as soon as it gets to that uh, trailing edge, uh, that's when the light will go off. And that, that way it's ready for the next box, and your print cycle should be complete. Now, that's a box. Those are fairly easy, and most uh, detector types will work on that. If you have a different colored box or uh, shiny or something like that, occasionally we'll need to select a different product detector, uh, but uh, make sure to give us a call if you have any difficulties with that, and that way we can help you choose the right one. Now, with the jar, we're going to move the box out of the way here. Notice that the jar is clear on this side. Of course, we do have a label um, as well as we've got, uh, got the lid here. Um, now, one of the things I'd like to point out to you is I'm not going to make a lot of movements here with the photo cell, uh, but I'm just going to use the back side of the jar here. You'll notice that we're not really getting a good clean read. Uh, we occasionally get a read there as it passes, but that's a single read in the bar, and the jar still hasn't gone all the way through uh, the print head there. So if we were to turn this around and make sure that the label was oriented in the same place each time, we get a good nice read off of that label all the way through. So if you can trigger the photo cell off of your label, that's fantastic. But again, you'll have to make sure that the photo cell is oriented correctly. The other way is, uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to lay this down, is to use the cap. You'll notice that the cap gets a good solid read all the way through until it exits. So for these, these types of applications, we would normally take the photo cell and adjust it up to where it's reading that cap as, the, as it passes by. So that way you get a good, nice, clean read on the cap each and every time. Get that mounted there, and you can see the light is on. And so as the jar passes each and every time, that light will come on and stay on the entire time until it passes. So that's a way to make sure that even on a clear object that we get a good read off of the sensor. A good signal on your product detection is key to making sure that you get a good print in the same position each and every time. If your print signal position changes, so will your print position. And that's going to mess up uh, your placement. So make sure that your photo cell is stable where it needs to be and that you're getting a good sensor read all the way through as the product passes.